So there are a lot of reasons that a cell can get damaged mm -hmm. and that in a way is that make it vulnerable to cancer. And one of them is that viruses. How, what, what do viruses do that turn a cell into a cancer cell? Yeah, I think we're beginning to more fully understand uh, the effects uh, um, viruses have uh, on, on cells and ultimately on human health. Um, we have established causal effects uh, for viruses in about 10% of cancers. Huh. Um, this was maybe underappreciated uh, when uh, President Nixon declared the war on cancer. If only that had been just simple war, hey? Right. Uh, but one of the things that came around that time was that viruses are a key culprit. And um, as people studied it more, they felt, well, maybe Maybe uh, other things have to do more and viruses don't have that much to do. And now we're having a re revisitation and resurgence of this. And now it's clearly established that uh, human papillomavirus. So uh, that's the one that causes cervical cancer. Uh, causes right? cervical cancer. And now there's a vaccine against. So that's making real progress, isn't it? Essentially, we can eliminate uh, many of these cancers and prevent them from happening uh, wow. through that understanding. Wow, that's genuine progress. Right. So when a virus does something that turns cells into cancer cells, is it just because the virus tends to disrupt the DNA and cause mutations? Or are there advantages to viruses in inducing the replication of cells that it's in? Yeah. So <clears throat> what, from what we know, a few different mechanisms seem to come into play. Uh, one of them is what you described, that the virus invades the cells and becomes part of the DNA of the cell. And where it um, interfaces it with breaks the DNA, right? Or right. It, it it puts itself into the DNA of the host, which in that case is, uh, you know, humans, uh, and causes hijacking of normal functions of that cell, and leads to things like cancer. Uh, the other way viruses could do this is they cause infection, and then they are not cleared, so they remain in whatever part of the body they infected and cause an inflammation, what you were referring to earlier in our discussions. Right. And that chronic inflammation ultimately sets up uh, a situation where cancers can occur. So the inflammation, I presume, induces cellular division to repair the tissue. And that kind of many, many cells reproducing themselves probably increases the risk of cancer all by itself. That sounds like uh, it, it, it may be the avenue through which it works where cells start maybe dividing more frequently than they're used to in that area. And when cells divide, there's always a chance for an error. Mm -hmm. The higher the rate of division, the higher the rate of errors, and the higher the rate of cancer, ultimately. But there are protections that natural selection has shaped for cells that have viruses that have disrupted the genome. How, do, how does the body know to do, do things to cells that have gone towards a cancer course? Yeah, so this goes into a completely different realm, which is sort of immune surveillance. Uh -huh. And um, if a cell is abnormal or has been sort of compromised, uh, whether it's because of an infection by a virus or by becoming cancerous, the body should eliminate it. However, if it escapes those processes, uh, that's when we could end up with something like cancer. So if a cancer can somehow fool the immune system, by removing some of those immunologic signals, then it can grow unimpeded. That's the generalization, is that? I think that's the concept we're talking about here, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, it's not like the cancer has a brain. Right, uh, right. It, it so happens to uh, result in changes that uh, allow the cancer to hide from the immune system um, and <coughs> com uh, go about its way uh, unperturbed, mm -hmm. and uh, the, re the result could be something as serious as cancer. So people talk sometimes about what are called driver mutations that are kind of central things. Are some of those involved in turning cancers invisible to the immune system? Um, I'm not sure if uh, driver mutations are, uh, are, are involved in that way. Uh, when I think of sort of immune surveillance, uh, I think of one of the biggest breakthroughs that's happened in the last uh, decade, which is uh, what we call immune checkpoints, uh -huh. where cancers uh, result in expression of things that turn off the immune system. And even if you have the immune system uh, cells present, they can't function. Mm -hmm. 
So does that give any new avenues for therapy, that insight? Uh, it has, and um, uh, in fact, within the last five years, uh, a number of cancers have become curable. Uh, a great example would be melanoma, uh, where we didn't have cures before, and now 30 to 40 percent of patients, even with advanced cancers, are living considerably long, and, and many of them so likely being cured. I remember when I was in medical school, we had patients with terminal melanoma, and sometimes they'd be given an infectious disease in hopes of stimulating an immune response, because every once in a while, that worked. Now we're way, way beyond that. That's right. It's wonderful. Let's go on in just a moment and talk about your research using viruses to get rid of cancer. Will do.